What precisely is happening with Mars this time around? Join us as we investigate the subject of whether the recent Mars finding by NASA was caused by extraterrestrial life, from what it means to what might have caused it. What could it possibly give now that we haven't already learned about, considering that we're hoping to reach the planet and human spacecraft within this new decade? Well, more than you may think. Given that Mars has already been shown to have liquid water and ice, and that it may have once supported all kinds of life and had a considerably greener makeup before an atmospheric hole appeared in it, anything is now theoretically feasible. But the fact that oxygen exists on the planet and that it does so in such large quantities amazes scientists at NASA and elsewhere at the moment. Clearly, the first query here is, was there always oxygen on Mars? And the answer is that yes, the amount of oxygen it had was a problem. In fact, the Curiosity rover that went to Mars spent three of its years, which is about six Earth years, studying the atmosphere of Mars by literally inhaling the gases that were around in the air, and the results that it spit out confirmed the makeup of the Martian atmosphere at the surface, 95% by volume of carbon dioxide, CO2, 2.6% molecular nitrogen, N2. 1.9% argon, AR, 0.16% molecular oxygen, O2, and 0.06% carbon monoxide. Of course, this is a dramatic contrast to Earth, where carbon dioxide levels are much lower, oxygen levels are much higher, and other gas balances exist. As you can see, oxygen has always existed on Mars, but NASA scientists aren't having that issue. Its behavior is the problem. You might be thinking, wait, a petrol has a behavior as you hear this. Okay, great. It exhibits behavior, just not human behavior. The rising and dropping amounts of gases in Earth's atmosphere and the atmospheres of other planets can be described as having a behavior. Usually, this is based on what is happening with the planet's seasons and the atmosphere. And Mars is no different, which is why the Curiosity rover scans are both fascinating and perplexing. It demonstrated how the molecules in the Martian air mix and move in response to seasonal fluctuations in air pressure. The air pressure on the Earth decreases as a result of the redistribution of air necessary to maintain pressure equilibrium when CO2 gas freezes over the poles in the winter. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is increased when CO2 evaporates in the spring and summer and mixes all across the planet. In this setting, researchers discovered that the concentrations of nitrogen and argon in Gale Crater wax and wane over the year in relation to the amount of CO2 in the air. They anticipated oxygen to behave similarly. It didn't though. Instead, the amount of the gas in the air increased by as much as 30% throughout the course of the spring and summer before falling back to the levels expected by known chemistry in the autumn. The amount of oxygen delivered to the atmosphere fluctuated, but this pattern persisted every spring, suggesting that something was making oxygen before removing it. Needless to say, scientists were a little perplexed when they first saw this pattern. We're struggling to explain this, said Melissa Trainer, a planetary scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, who oversaw this study. We believe that the problem is unrelated to atmospheric dynamics because the oxygen behavior isn't exactly reproducible throughout the year. There must be some unaccounted for chemical source and wash basin. Believe it or not, this isn't the only gas on Mars whose unpredictable rises and falls are making scientists shake their heads. The other is methane, which in the Gale Crater can occasionally reach levels of up to 60% in the summer, but drops to such low levels the rest of the year that scanners can hardly detect it. Some experts are pondering whether there is a relationship between two separate gases on Mars that are causing a mystery in terms of levels and other things. Sushil Atreya, professor of climate and space sciences at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, said, We're starting to see this tantalizing correlation between methane and oxygen for a good part of the Mars year. I believe there is substance to it. Just yet, I don't know the answers. Nobody complies. Are these two related in any way? 
it's feasible, and if science as we currently understand it cannot account for it, then there must be a force at play that we are only unaware of. And many individuals are speculating as to whether that factor is life. Don't misunderstand me, I'm not referring to Martians or even animal life that exists below the surface of Mars, although we technically can't rule out the second one just yet as we haven't drilled into Mars deep enough to make that proclamation. Instead, it's more likely that bacteria, microbes, and other microscopic life are responsible for this dramatic rise in oxygen and methane levels in the atmosphere. Of course, there are additional scenarios in which this could be, according to Timothy McConaughey, an assistant research scientist at the University of Maryland in College Park and another co-author of the paper, we have not been able to come up with one process that produces the amount of oxygen we need. But we think it has to be something in the surface soil that changes seasonally because there aren't enough available oxygen atoms in the atmosphere to create the behavior we see. However, since that is the reason you are here, let's stick with the life concept for a little while. Let's simply pretend that in terms of the bacteria or tiny life I had earlier mentioned, there is life on Mars. What would that imply for all of Mars? On the surface, that would imply that Mars has considerably more to offer us than it did in the past. It also shows that there are countless surprises that it might possibly have in store for us. But staying with the topic of life, if we do discover items of this nature, it may imply that there is more life than previously thought on Mars. In spite of the numerous images and other evidence, we have only thoroughly studied a small portion of the globe. We haven't even come close to going all the way around it. Due to timing and previous outcomes with other rovers, the Gale Crater has recently received attention. This is fortunate because everything recently intriguing on Mars has been discovered there. Anyhow, if there is life inside the crater, perhaps in the ground and dirt below, that could imply that there are other locations on Mars that are similar. It is obvious that it is not present throughout Mars, else it would have been discovered much earlier. However, the fact that it is seasonal and manifests itself in at least one location suggests that something organic or chemical in origin is to blame. However, if it is organic and if we are able to collect samples of it and learn how it is acting that could essentially change everything for us on Mars. Not simply because we found life of some sort, but also because of the potential applications. How so? Remember that the atmosphere on Mars is primarily made up of gases, making it difficult for humans to breathe there. But if we could capture this bacteria, let's say, and discover how and why it is able to manufacture oxygen in the atmosphere at specific rates, we might be able to make it do that on demand and provide us with a source of breathing air. If we were to live in a human colony, it's true that it wouldn't be able to simply fill the atmosphere with oxygen, though that is something that could happen in the future as I'll explain later, but we would probably be in a dome or something similar. Long-term survival would require recycled oxygen, but where would that oxygen initially come from? Of course, we have oxygen tanks to power things like suits, but for a colony? That is a different issue. These bacteria might provide us with the numbers we need to populate a colony and make it sustainably livable. Additionally, it serves as a fallback in the event that the oxygen recyclers malfunction. Long-term terraforming of Mars would be possible if we were able to do this in large quantities with bacteria or other creatures, something that has long been simply a theory. Oh yeah, we're going to alter Mars from the inside out. Terraforming is the process of transforming a piece of land's natural state. Therefore, in the case of Mars, making it into a place where we may live, breathe, and grow things without the need for a suit, dome, or other means. The atmosphere and magnetic field of the planet are, of course, the main issue with this. Since there is no liquid water on the surface of Mars, at least none that we are aware of, the water originates from ice at the polar caps, the atmosphere of Mars has a large hole in it. Additionally, it explains why the planet's gases differ so greatly from those of Earth. Due to the destruction of the planet's magnetic field and atmosphere, the planet is now constantly bombarded by solar radiation and other hazardous substances. 
Because of the seasons and the planet's relationship to the sun, the temperature on the planet might be extremely hot or extremely frigid. It is not even close to being as balanced as Earth's, and as Mars lacks a robust atmosphere and a magnetic field, it is constantly being pummeling by meteors over the course of millennia and centuries. However, if we were able to fix the atmosphere, which isn't as audacious as it sounds, trust me, and discover a way to alter the magnetic field's characteristics, we could use bacteria or some other organism to flesh out the atmosphere, increase the planet's oxygen levels in a way that would make it possible for us to live on Mars more freely, and thus, along with other techniques already in development, make a planet much more habitable to live on. It would make a significant difference in the plans to colonize Mars even if we did this for a single area, say a country-sized area, which, in all honesty, does have merit and plans for it right now. And what if we also did that for the methane ones? Since methane is a source of energy, we could utilize it to run almost anything on the Earth. Win-win. Yes, there is also the interesting fact about how we learned there was life on other planets. It won't be a big event, but I'm sure some people will be enthusiastic about what it might imply for the cosmos as a whole. It goes without saying that this finding will alter our perception of the universe and other planets on a global scale. Because even if it's very small, it would indicate that life exists on a planet other than Earth. That would be enormous in every manner that matters and more because there is now a chance that life of various forms will be discovered on all other worlds. Even those that might not appear to have any life at all. If we looked at the surface and saw nothing, we may then consider Mars and speculate, perhaps it's just below the surface. Yes, to be the devil's advocate, it's entirely feasible that what is occurring on Mars with the oxygen and methane has nothing whatsoever to do with life. It might be something related to the dirt during specific seasons, or it might be a reservoir of trapped gases beneath the ground that is only revealed during specific seasons, as some people have speculated. It's plausible, even extremely likely. But since we don't yet know the answer, we're becoming anxious. Scientists hate IT when they can't figure things out, so some people are going mad, but for those who still have a sense of wonder in their hearts, they're excited. Due to the freshness and recentness of this enigma, many people will be working on it, each contributing their expertise to the effort to solve it. And as the experts have remarked, perhaps you or someone else can find a solution if they can't. If you wish to try to solve it on your own, the challenge has been laid out for you. Just passing along. This is the first instance in which we have noticed this intriguing behavior spanning a number of years. We're not entirely sure what it is, Trainer remarked. For me, this is an open call to all the smart people out there who are interested in this. See what you can come up with. Thank you everybody for watching.